So we uh, we had to introduce three things to talk about uh, rigid body uh, rigid body kinetics, rigid body dynamics. Uh, we had to introduce centroid, mass moment of inertia, and the last thing we have to do is the moment of a force about a point. So we call it moment, but think of it as the moment of a force about a point, but you'll get tired of saying it out loud. Um, so the idea of a moment, oh, and by the way, uh, physics, physics people tend to use moment and torque interchangeably. In engineering, a torque is, uh, is a pair of moments that causes a rotation, it causes a twist about a, some kind of shaft. So it's a specific kind of moment. So um, that's why I'm going to always use the word moment here and torques come up in like deform or whatever. Um, but the idea of a moment is uh, the tendency of a force to produce a rotation. Um, and so, if you're trying to turn a stuck bolt, like on a timing belt, <laughs> just kidding. I don't know Can if they're. To that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should we should go into this. We finally got to go <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so. Uh, So if you're going to apply 200 newtons of force to try to loosen this bolt, you know from experience you'll get you'll get more you'll have more luck turning it by applying that force a long distance from the axis of rotation than here, and and you know from experience that if you try to turn this wrench by applying a force of 200 newtons there, it's never going to turn anything. Even it'll, it'll rip that bolt in half before it'll turn anything. So that's the idea of a moment. Newtons, yes. Um, and the definition for us is this. So uh, I think in physics, maybe you thought about it more in terms of like lever arms and perpendicular forces and whatever. But we're just going to do it all with a vector calculation that'll do all the perpendicular stuff for us. Um, so if this is some arbitrary body and you define an about point, call it A, and there's some force applied at a different point, and the point where this force vector is applied is the point P. Then find the row vector is going from A to P. So that's the Greek letter rho. And the moment about that point A that's produced by F is equal to the vector rho crossed with the vector f. Yes. Uh, well, a point, um, the coordinates of a point are a vector from the or You can think of coordinates and vectors interchangeably because the position vector of anything is, is a vector that goes from the origin to the point. So, but yeah, you can think of that as as just points. But if you wanted to calculate that row vector, uh, by the way, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, like what, which part of this notation? Oh, um, I guess I'm probably toward the more, uh, no, the less liberal side of notation, like the more. <laughs> No, I'm definitely not a Trump supporter. Now I have to edit that off my uh, video. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I, I'm not like the strictest person with notation you've ever seen, but uh, I, I do think that the, I, I probably put more emphasis on that than, than a lot of people do. So, uh, well, I'll talk a little bit about the subscripts that I use. Um, anything I don't talk about specifically, you can write it however you want, I guess. But there's some stuff that I'll that I'll talk about specifically, like this is how I want you to denote this or whatever. Um, as far as whether I label this a vector, p vector, that either one of those is totally correct, no matter how strict you are. So. Mm -hmm. You won't lose half the points. Yeah, definitely not. Um. Okay, so if you define M A net as the sum of uh, all of the moments about A, you know, over all the forces. So M A net is just a sum of all the moments. Uh, then what I always abbreviate RN2L, that's the rotational version of Newton's second law or the moment equation. That I'm not strict about. You don't ever have to write that. Um, says M A net is equal to the mass moment of inertia about A times the angular acceleration vector as long as A is either A fixed point, those don't always exist, but if they do, you can use that, or the center of mass of the body. Um, And I want to say one thing before I start doing example problems about, you know, a lot of times, like, I think in everything we did in physics one, pretty much, um, the big difference is between 1D and 2D. So you first learn one-dimensional stuff, and then you go to 2D stuff, and you don't do much in 3D, but extending from 2D to 3D is simple. Uh, this is a case where 2D and 3D are sort of fundamentally different, and I, I want to just uh, describe why that is. Um, interesting. One interesting thing about rigid body bony, rigid body, kinetics. Um, two D and three D are fundamentally different.
and that's unusual. Um, and here's why. In 2D, uh, think about an object moving through um, So let's say at instant one, you have an object that's in this position. Here's the coordinate system in the plane. And then at instant two, it's in this position. Okay, so when this rotation happens, this body's mass moment of inertia doesn't change. So this rotation didn't affect the body's uh, mass moment of inertia. But in 3D, if you think about um, say a disk that goes from disorientation so this is at instant one. And at instant two, it like this. Where, okay, so call that x, y, z. And at instant two, this is x, y, z. The body going through that rotation has changed the mass moments of inertia about the different axes. Okay, you see that? So, um, whereas before the mass moment of inertia about the z axis at instant one was like the, the blade. Now, after the rotation, the mass moment of inertia about Z is like a paddle, and we've changed the, the mass moment of inertia. That didn't happen here because there's only one axis of rotation. So in either case, we're just rotating a slender rod about its end, okay? And so this, the fact that the mass moment of inertia is changing at every instant means that you have to take a very different approach to it. And I'm not going to go into um, what that approach is, uh, but this is why we're not going to do any three-dimensional problems. Um, you might think like, oh yeah, let's just, you know, let's see some three-dimensional problems and we'll just have to work through the extra component or whatever. But um, this is why it's a big deal to go from 2D to 3D. So this difference requires a very different approach in 3D. Let's do an example problem. So let's say uh, there's a wall and a hinge. And a big uh, beam attached to the hinge. And this beam is two meters long. And the mass is 10 kilograms. Um, so.
So let's say, uh, what are the angular acceleration of the beam? Uh, what's the acceleration of this point P? And third, uh, what are the reaction forces at the pin? The first thing to do is draw a free body diagram of the beam. At a pin joint, uh, there have to be forces along the x-axis and the y-axis to prevent that point from translating. So we just have an unknown force vector there. I'll call that RA. For part C, we're going to try to find that. And then the only other force is the weight force that acts at the center of mass. That's equal to 10 times 9.81, so 98.1. Um, and uh, for these problems, as a bookkeeping thing, I like to write out the row vectors for all these things, the force vectors, and the moments. Um, these moments, since we're only doing 2D problems, the moments are always going to be Z component only. So you can, so you can treat these as two-dimensional vectors and treat that as a scalar because the Z component is the only non-zero one. Uh, okay, so in order to calculate the row vectors, we need to know what our about point's going to be. Um, so... We, we always have two, there are always two possibilities to consider for an about point. Uh, first, you want to use any fixed point. If the body you're isolating has a point that's fixed in the coordinate system, you want to use that. Uh, second, if you don't have that, you can use the center of mass. So does this one have a fixed point? Yeah, yeah at the pin. So the about point is going to be here. So for the force RA, the row vector is zero. The force is R A X R A Y. Cross product is zero. Um, and now uh, the weight force. The row vector, the vector from A to the center of mass, is positive 1, 0. That's the vector from here to here. The force vector is 0, negative 98.1. And so the cross product is 1 times 98.1 minus 0 times 0, so negative 98.1. Um, it is for the moment. So I haven't, I haven't written as a as a scalar there. And the reason is um, these moments are always perpendicular to the plane of the rotation they would pass. You can think of the direction as like the, the axis of rotation according to the right hand rule. And so if you're doing problems in the plane, the xy plane, this is always in the positive or negative z direction. And so you only have to worry about one component. So you could write this as zero, 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 you know, this is one, zero, zero. 
this is 0, negative 98.10, and then this would be 0, 0, negative 98.1. But you can save yourself some pin strokes by just only writing the Z component. But in general, yes, moments are vectors. That's why I have the vector symbol over it. Yes. Yep. No, that's this is X and Y. So, um, so these are like X, Y, and and this is Z. Okay. All right. Uh, so now we have to figure out we're going to use the rotational Newton second law. Um, so before we can use it, we need the mass moment of inertia about A. Um, so for a rectangle, about its center of mass, we know that this is, well, I guess actually I didn't give a thickness, did I? So we're going to do this as a slender rod. Um, so 1 12th times the mass times the length squared. So uh, that's 3.3 repeating kilogram meters squared. But we're not rotating this slender rod around its center of mass. We're rotating at about one end point. So uh, we have to use the parallel axis theorem. So the mass moment of inertia about A is equal to the mass moment of inertia about the center of mass plus MD squared. So that's 3.3 .3 repeating plus the mass of 10. And then what's the distance that you have to travel from the center of mass to the point that we're considering? Yeah, negative or positive, it's squared. So we'll just put in 1. You can just think of that as a distance and absolute value. And so the total mass moment of inertia is 13.3 repeating kilogram meter squared. So now the rotational equation says add up all the moments. That's the zero and the negative 98.1. That's equal to the mass moment of inertia, 13.3 repeating, times alpha. And so alpha is equal to negative 98.1 divided by 13.3 repeating, which is negative 7.38 radians per second squared. Okay, so uh, would this thing rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise, because it's negative. And notice that what this says, since we did this as a scalar equation, but moments and, and angular accelerations are really vectors. So remember that this, what we're really doing here is rotational Newton's second law just for the z component. And so the angular acceleration vector is 0, 0, negative 7.38. Any questions about that? 
Okay, so that's the answer to A. Now for B, we're trying to figure out the acceleration of that endpoint. So how are we going to do that? Yes, watermelon equation. Oh, and uh, let's pretend I said this before. Uh, initially at rest. Or up in the, sorry, that's the wrong place. Up in the problem statement. Uh, no. No. Nope. Yeah. But we'll see how this will this will change the problem. Uh, okay. So, um, if we're trying to figure out the acceleration of that point P, there's the pin joint. This thing's traveling through a path like this instantaneously. It's in circular motion. And so uh, this is the point P. The center of the circle is the hinge. So the acceleration of the point P is equal to alpha cross R plus omega cross quantity omega cross R. What's the R vector? Two zero zero. What's the omega vector? Zero zero zero. Um. Yes, that's right. So actually, I'll do one at the end where we'll we'll say that it's initially moving with some speed, and we'll see that that'll uh, affect not just the acceleration of that point P, but it'll affect those uh, reaction forces too. Uh, our alpha is what we just calculated, 0, 0, negative 7.38. So the acceleration of the point P is 0, 0, negative 7.38, crossed with 2, 0, 0. And that is zero, negative fourteen point seven six zero. Meters per second squared. By the way, look, that's sort of an interesting thing is that Acceleration of this point on this rigid body is greater than the acceleration of free fall, even though it's only gravity that's causing that. That's another, did I, have I been talking to you guys about bar bets and stuff? That's another good one. Get someone on that. You have to have pretty uh, sophisticated apparatus set up to measure the accelerations without making them uh, suspicious. But if you can get someone to bet on that, what? Yeah, after you are, you probably want to bet them before you go get the apparatus to measure acceleration. Be like, yeah, so what? <laughs> no, that's not what they'll say. I, I don't think so. I've never done it, but I don't think so. <laughs> I think they'll happily give you the money once they see it. They'll, they'll be like, money well spent. What are you going to? <laughs> okay, so uh, the last thing we want to do is figure out the reaction force. So how are we going to do that? How, I ask. Newton's second law, yeah. 
So we'll use Newton's second law, which means that um, we have to figure out the acceleration of the center of mass, right? So Newton's second law says, add up all the force vectors, those we have, are equal to, well, no, we don't have those. Uh, add up all the force vectors, one of those we don't know, we don't know the reaction force vector, is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. So if we can calculate the acceleration of the center of mass, we can use that to calculate the force. How do we figure out the acceleration of the center of mass? But yes, that's right. So use Watermelon equation again. So the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to alpha cross r plus omega cross quantity omega cross r. <clears throat> Uh, the R vector this time instead of two zero zero is one zero zero. <coughs> Omega is still equal to zero. <coughs> and alpha is still equal to zero zero negative seven point three eight. So the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to 0, 0, negative 7.38 crossed with 1, 0, 0. Question? Plus, you know, 0 from the centripetal acceleration. And so that comes out to be 0, negative 7.38 zero. So now Newton's second law, this is where it's nice to have all of the, um, have all your forces and moments in a place where you can easily look at them whenever you need them. Here are the two forces we have. Force R A. So add those two up. Um, so R A X R A Y plus zero negative ninety eight point one is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass, which is zero negative seven point three eight zero. I'm only doing this as 2D, so I'll just leave that off. And so RAX is equal to zero. RAY is equal to I didn't do that part before. So what's Negative 98.1, uh, positive 98.1 minus 73.8, 24.3. So there's the reaction force. Ra is equal to zero, um, 24.3 newtons. Any questions about that? Okay, so what would happen if uh, if we did, let's not go through the calculation, but what would happen if it wasn't initially at rest, if we said that this had some starting omega value, it was spinning at this instant, um, what would change? Uh, the forces and moments wouldn't change. The moment of inertia wouldn't change, so you'd still get the same 
angular acceleration. But what would change is when we started using the watermelon equation to calculate accelerations of points. Um, now you would have a centripetal acceleration. So the acceleration of this point P would also have a component that way. Okay. The acceleration of the center of mass would also have a centripetal acceleration pointing that way. And so therefore that reaction force there would have to be an X component of that re reaction force in the negative X direction uh, to keep that moving in its circular path. Um, I want to go through a set of steps that you can use at the, at least at the beginning for all these problems. Okay. So general steps. For 2D rigid body problems. Or kinetic problems. First, does the object have a fixed point? If yes, then A is the fixed point. If no, then A is the center of mass. Second, calculate the mass moment of inertia for the about point from one. From step one. Third, draw a free body diagram. Step four notch is calculating that net. Right. Yep. Uh, fourth, calculate your row, force, and moment for all forces. Okay, now fifth, um, only do this if the end point is the center of mass. And that's used Newton's second law. Okay, so we saw that in the example we just did. If your if you're about point is uh, a fixed point, then you might later, for something they ask specifically, you might have to go back and use Newton's second law to calculate a force or something. But if all you're trying to figure out is the angular acceleration, you don't need this if you have a fixed point. You only need it if you have, if your about point is the center of mass. Okay. Uh, six. Rotational Newton second law. And then the last thing, I mean, at this after step six, you've calculated the angular acceleration, which is what you have to do in every one of these problems. Then seven, you know, you'll usually have to use the watermelon equation to find something else. Or if you don't, you can that's when you can eat some watermelon. And relax.
Um, okay, let's stop there, and we'll do a really cool problem. Uh, not, well, actually, not yet. But we'll do we'll do a rolling problem on Friday. That's sort of cool. But then wait till we do the the full calculate the full formula for success in a Pinewood Derby race. That's going to be good. We'll do it. Oh, next next week. Okay, that's good to know. Exam on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. I was going to get wind of it some way or other. Some review on Friday. Um, I'm not going to do like a review, but uh, if you have questions about homework and you bring them on Friday, I'll answer any homework questions you have or any questions about the test. No. Uh, it'll just be up through... Uh, yeah, just up through particle kinetics. No. So yeah, if you want to talk about, if you have problems you want to talk about on the stuff that, I'll put that all on D2L. But bring questions you have on Friday. Yeah, up through, you know, it's all cumulative. But yeah. <laughs>